When I joined Halliburton, I knew I was going to work on some big things. The biggest thing? Serving our troops. I enlisted in the U.S. Army at the age of 17. My uh, grandfather fought in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. My father was an Army captain. I re-enlisted after September 11th out of a sense of duty. And I was deployed to Iraq. I actually got to put all my training to use when I could actually make those decisions on the ground and say, yeah, I'm doing the right thing here. I'm representing America well. You know, I'm representing myself and my unit. I joined the National Guard as a medic. I'm a specialist in the military, in the Army National Guard. I served for a year in Iraq during 2004. I was a sergeant and I, I was stationed at Camp Anaconda. I have a fundamental belief in America and I believe in my freedoms and I enjoy my freedoms in America um, because I know how many people in the world don't enjoy those freedoms. Well, I saw contractors in Iraq doing anywhere from helping fix tanks, helicopter mechanics, pretty much any job that's in the military, there's a civilian contractor right there. Defense contractors are indispensable. We need them to do the things that our small military can no longer do for itself. But there's no honest control. Many soldiers were dissatisfied with the quality of the dining hall facilities and the PX and the laundry. And we had read that KBR had been fined millions of dollars for overcharging for meals that were never served. And I think a lot of us felt gypped. We felt gypped by you know, AT&T charging such a high rate to call home. We felt gypped by the laundry, you know, not returning our clothes. And so it was kind of the, the accumulation of all these small gripes and complaints that really led us to have, in my experience, a very negative impression of the private services in Iraq. There was so much money being given away over there to, to contractors. I mean, there were, there were jobs that didn't even need to be there. Here we saw these private contractors doing a job that was the same or, or less difficult than we were doing, and they're getting paid $120,000 a year. Meanwhile, a lot of people in my unit were struggling just to pay bills back at home. It was a, uh, a source of anger and tension amongst a lot of the people there. We're working side by side with people who are doing the same job we're doing uh, and getting paid so much more. It just didn't, didn't make any sense to us. And it certainly affected retention. To have my job being outsourced is probably a big reason why I did not stay in the military. One of the things that repels me as a former soldier is the way unscrupulously greedy people in industry wrap themselves in the flag and invoke our troops. Nothing's too good for our troops. The troops increasingly get what defense industry wants to sell them rather than what they genuinely need. The soldiers felt were resentful of having to protect private industry. Resentment that they had to go on an extra mission or they had to expose themselves to additional risk for something they considered inessential, basically, that they, they didn't feel it was a military necessity. No matter what you did in the military, uh, you would turn to a bodyguard and have to watch over the civilians. The more civilians you have out there, the more military people you need to, go, to guard them. So it was spreading us thin. The contractors who are supposed to save the military and free the military up to do other jobs wind up requiring military protection themselves. When I arrived in, in Baghdad in October of 2003, there was no body armor available there, so I ended up buying my own from bulletproofme.com for $800. You're still finding soldiers that don't have the proper equipment. They're missing a ballistic vest, or they didn't get their combat boots. I don't understand why the government can't supply. I really don't. Most of the money is going towards contracting. It's not about what's best for our citizens. It's like what's best for corporate profit. It's corporate welfare. You know, the, uh, the administration is just pushing money at these, at these uh, contractors as fast as they can. Whether Iraq succeeds or fails, whether our military comes home in two years or 20, whoever's in office, Democrats or Republicans, the one group that will not lose out on Iraq in the long run are the contractors. They will make their profits. A war shouldn't be about a way to make money for a certain corporation. It should be about fighting the cause. The profiteering that is going on over there, I think, is highly demoralizing to soldiers. I don't know how else to put it, you know, you just, you, you get this attitude like, well, why should I care?
I volunteered to be a soldier. I was there doing my job as I understood it that I had sworn oath to do. But to see, to see the profiteering and to see the corporate influence in everything kind of makes, kind of makes a soldier, well, made this soldier feel like, I, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing here.